Captain. So this week we're going to be doing speech 101. Um, just a quick reminder, GEAR UP stands for Gaining Early Awareness and Readiness for Undergraduate Programs. So again, that's my goal here for you guys to help you guys get ready for college. And um, I also forgot to mention in, last, in the last lesson that um, being a part of GEAR UP and doing these activities is really beneficial because at the end of this program, you're going to be able to write this into your UC application. And again, that makes you stand out from other students. So I want to just remind you guys that that um, there's benefits of doing the work in here and completing it. So we're gonna start off by creating a list of do's and don'ts of a good presentation. All right, so here are just a few things um, that makes a good presenter. Again, their list of these things can be much longer, um, but for today, we're gonna highlight some of the most important ones. So presenters should stand up straight. You don't wanna be slouchy, you don't wanna be looking around, you want to stand up straight um, and show your confidence to the audience. Presenters should make good eye contact with the audience. So again, you don't want to be looking up, you don't want to be twiddling with your fingers, looking down. You really want to keep eye contact with your audience to make sure that they stay engaged. And then presenters should have loud enough tone so it is easy to hear him or her. Again, you don't want to whisper when you're whispering. People don't really want to pay attention to you and they don't really care what you're saying. But when you're loud and you're projecting your voice, people want to listen to what you have to say and they're more likely to stay engaged. And then last but not least, a good presentation should have a good beginning, middle, and end. It's very similar to your, your writing. You have an introduction, and then you have a middle, and you have an end. So when you're creating a speech, you really want to start off good. And, and the way you start off is going to determine if your audience is going to keep listening to you or not. And then in the middle, it's important to have like the facts and more you know so the details of your what you're presenting and then the end should kind of recap the whole thing and re-engage your audience to remind them like what it is that you're there to present and again there's a lot of other things that we could add to this list um, but for now i want us to focus on these and now the don'ts of a good presenter so these are things that you should try to avoid presenter should not slouch again you don't want to be like this looking down like you want to sit or stand straight and show your confidence Presenters should not be looking at his or her speech cards or the floor. Again, just maintaining that eye contact. Presenters should not be whispering. We should be projecting our voice, making sure that everybody in the room can hear us. And a bad presentation is rushed and lacking a cohesive flow. What that means is um, a good presenter should at least try to seem calm when they're presenting. It, it shows that you are more of an expert of what you're talking about. When you're rushed or feel like, you know, talking fast or showing that you're nervous, most people um, won't want to listen to what you're saying or won't take you seriously. So it's really important to have that confidence to project your voice, keep eye contact, and don't rush. And then I'm going to show you guys a few examples of some speeches. This is the Viola Davis's speech when she won her Emmy. And I'm going to go ahead and play that for you guys. The Emmy goes to Viola Davis. This is the first Emmy win and nomination for Viola Davis. 
who is a graduate of Juilliard. In my mind, I see a line. And over that line, I see green fields and lovely flowers and beautiful white women with their arms stretched out to me over that line. But I can't seem to get there, no how. I can't seem to get over that line. That was Harriet Tubman in the 1800s. And let me tell you something. The only thing that separates women of color from anyone else is opportunity. You cannot win an Emmy for roles that are simply not there. So here's to all the writers, the awesome people that are Ben Sherwood, Paul Lee, Peter Nowak, Shonda Rhimes, people who have redefined what it means to be beautiful, to be sexy, to be a leading woman, to be black. And to the Taraji P. Hensons, the Kerry Washingtons, the Halle Berrys, the Nicole Baharis, the Megan Goods, to Gabrielle Union, thank you for taking us over that line. Thank you, the Television Academy. Thank you. And the Emmy goes to Julie Louis Dreyfus. All right, and then now I'm going to be showing you guys uh, Miss Teen USA from South Carolina, her um, speech when she was asked a question. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps, and uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and... I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. Or, or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries. So we will be able to build up our future. For our Thank you very much, South Carolina. Yeah, let's talk about this. So as you guys can see in the first presentation, Viola Davis was you know, amazing. She went up there, she said what she had to say, and she got off. It was uh, short and sweet, but it was powerful. Very, very powerful and impactful. And you saw the crowd was very moved. She showed confidence. Um, she did show some emotion, which is, which is good. Um, it will, will really help the audience really uh, empathize with you. The second one, however, you can see she was not prepared for the question. She did not answer the question, and she ultimately just did not do a good job. So that's an example of what a good presentation would look like and a bad presentation. You want to make sure that you come prepared. Um, at least have thought about what you're going to say or present. It really helps with all the other um, points. All right, the six do's of presenting. So we already kind of discussed a few and we saw an example of what a good presentation would look like and a bad presentation would look like. And now I'm just gonna give you guys further points on what makes a good presenter. Okay, so introducing yourself. It is always really um, important to introduce yourself 
in the beginning of the presentation, one, so the audience knows who you are, and two, that just shows that you're confident. You walk in the room, you introduce yourself, and you tell people what you're about to uh, present on, and they'll be engaged. Second, practice, practice, practice. I know it's awkward, uncomfortable to like practice in front of a mirror or just and practice in front of family, but it is totally worth it. You will notice that practicing really, practice makes perfect. That's, that's, it is what it is. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> so you guys can also um, practice recording yourself, record yourself giving a speech and then going back and looking at it and you'll notice things that you didn't notice um, before. And third, keeping eye contact. Like I mentioned, eye contact keeps your audience interested and engaged and lets them know that you're talking to them. And then asking questions. Um, on here, it says to ask at the end, but I'm a huge believer that you ask questions whenever, whenever. If you are in the middle of your presentation and you want to take a break to ask questions real quick, that is perfectly fine. You can do it in the middle and ask questions. And then I would still at the end, go back and ask questions and then outline. So once you have your topic, spend time outlining the main sections of what you want to talk about. That's to keep you organized, keep you on track and prevent you from rambling on. And then the last one, timing, wrap up your talk on time, have someone give you cues so you know what time you have left. So if you're giving a really important speech and they're only giving you three minutes, ask somebody in the class or ask the teacher, hey, can you give me, you know, a tap when I only have a minute left. Um, that way you can have an idea of what to say and how much time you have. All right, and activity time. So for this portion, this is what you guys will be turning in. Um, if your last name begins with the following letter, you will choose one of these topics and record yourself doing a speech or create a TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram video and talk about any of those options. So for example, my last name starts with a C, Ms. Canales. So I will be picking from the A through H list. Um, let's say I want to create a video about my favorite food, I would then, um, it doesn't have to be long guys, it could be really, really short, just you guys um, presenting yourself like, hi, my name is Francis Canales, and today I'm going to be presenting to you on my favorite food, and then continue from there. Um, if there's any questions on this portion, please feel free to uh, contact me, email me. Um, you guys can also um, follow the Alliance Gear Up in, uh, yeah, Instagram and share your videos on there with me. If you do share them on Instagram with me, please make sure when you send them, you um, save in chat again. If you send them to me on Instagram, make sure you save them in the chat. If you're not gonna send them on Instagram and you just want to uh, turn them in on Google Classroom, that is good too. You can also turn it in in Google Classroom. So um, I'm gonna give you guys the week to complete this, this assignment and to get this um, back to me. <clears throat> so um, to wrap things up, I need you guys to complete this assignment, pick your topic according to your last name, and then um, record yourself and send that to me. And then I will also need you guys to complete the handout that you guys, um, that should be attached to the assignment in Google Classroom. Um, so okay, one last time. Gear up students, please complete this activity. Again, it's by last name. So if your last name starts with an A, you would be choosing from list A through H and so on and so forth. And then I will also need you guys to complete the uh, worksheet that I sent you guys.